Hi you guys, this is Rachel Kirkland here, the Modern Shaman, and thanks for being with me for another YouTube Q&A video of the week. I give that same introduction every time, so you're probably used to it if you're part of my crew. But if you want a video of psychic development, paranormal understanding, and multidimensional integration at its finest. <laughs> I don't know if it's its finest, but I am definitely fully, wholeheartedly present and active in this time with you guys. If you are new to the channel, like, subscribe, hit that notifications button, button, <laughs> I said button, but button, and let me think if there is, do all your due diligence, right? You know what you do when you like a new channel and you subscribe on Facebook and you share it with people and you spread the word and spread your love, all of those goody goodies. I invite you to do that and share and join us and just be part of our community. If you want to send your own question in too, I'm probably down to like 10 or 15, which is, means send, a, send some new ones in. Those go on my website. So if you go to my website, themodernshaman.net, and you go to the last um, page, which is the contact form, there's a spot in there to connect with my team. And when you send that little comment in, you basically just say, this is my question for the YouTube channel, and you put it in there and you hit send. So it goes to the team and they put it in a little folder and I pull out one each week. That's where you do it, and I would love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear the comments too. I can't always get back to them right away, but I do read them. I read them. It's not just my team that reads them. I read them all and um, I promise I will get back to you. It is my promise to ya, okay? All right, oh! I forgot to mention this, and I'm in such an amped up energy, I'm super excited. So you may notice, if you have been on my website before, I'm wearing the same garb, the same outfit, <laughs> in all of the photo shoot that's on my website. And I am super duper excited because this week and last week, and I think next week too, I'm filming for a new uh, teaching platform that I'm gonna be launching in January. And of course, they asked me to wear the same like <laughs> outfit so that it coincides with what's on my website. It's one big, you know, marketing kind of branding platform thing. I have an amazing marketing lady that's helping me launch this teaching platform. She is awesome. If anybody is trying to do that for themselves, I got the hookup for you because she is phenomenal. And so I've been videoing and doing all of this taping um, in the set with a teaching curriculum, which is going to be more than this. It's module based. So it's different than my retreats and my intensive weekends, which is like full force, all in. I'm with you and I'm doing the curriculum and the practicum and all of the activities there and kind of guiding and facilitating you on hand. This is going to be module based where you can download and just like click little sections. Like if you're just interested in shape shifting or if you're just interested in, uh, I don't know, astral travel or meditation techniques specifically garnered for clairvoyance and helping develop that exercised muscle. There's so many things in there I'm super excited about. And my launch lady, my marketing guru said that I could start talking about it now because we're getting close to January launch. And I'm sure you'll see more info uh, from me. But all that to say, I'm wearing the same outfit. <laughs> I really don't have that many clothes, you guys. I'm not like a big shopper. So be patient, be loving towards me anyways. Love me anyways, okay? <laughs> Take me as I am, all right? Okay, so let's get to it. I've been jabbing enough. Here is the video question for the day. Hi, Rachel. I love your channel and this new format with three focus points. It helps my ADD brain. <laughs> I like that you said that because my team, I've been kind of amping up all of my team, which is phenomenal. I'm so blessed and grateful with these amazing people that help me do what I do. And my YouTube girl, is young and hip and way cooler than me and she was like you got to do the three points and you got to do this and that and you got to she you know knew the algorithm and she's been on so it's good to hear that confirmation come back from you guys it is easier to focus on just three things i mean i should have thought of that a long time ago i'm embarrassed that i didn't think about it because every like youtube in this genre does that and it just took me a little while to catch on and do things that other people were doing 
You know me. I kind of do my own thing. Ooh, I just saw an orb. Did y'all see that? Mm, spirit. Spirit likes that I do my own thing. <laughs> they send orbs when I say that, yeah, I'm my own thing. Okay, get on with it. Rachel, I'm saying to myself. My question may seem simple, but I often hear you and other people talk about ceremonies for the full moon or for clearing, and I don't know how to set up ceremony space. Is there anything special I should be doing to make it sacred? Okay, so ceremony. This is a good one. I don't think we've talked about this. So I love it when new questions come up and enter, you know, the mixed bag. So let's talk about three tips for creating ceremonial spaces. All right. So the first thing that I need to say about this is that spaces need to align in their geometric shape with the purpose and intention for what your ceremony will do or what you're doing during that time of ceremony. All right. So the most commonly used space or sacred geometrical shape is the sphere, is the circle, right? And these are used if you are doing a ceremony that um, you want, like a full moon ceremony would be nice, aligning with a new intention, kind of setting up a new pattern, and you want to soak yourself in that energy. Because it's a circle and a sphere, all of the energy is equally distributed, right? So think about a crystal ball or any kind of, even like a lighting fixture or a light box, if you're in a studio setting, right? Diffused lighting or putting an umbrella over the lighting. It diffuses and equalizes all of the light. So when you're having a ceremony that you want to absorb this new energy, um, then I would create this space in a circular shape, in a spherical intentional shape, so that all of the light is equally distributed and absorbed by your body. So the circular shape also is really great for birthing ceremonies. Oftentimes people do this and they don't even realize it. They're in the shape of a circle if they're in a water bath uh, when they're giving birth. And this is not just physical birth. This is also birthing a new idea, birthing a new identity, birthing a new life of ascension, birthing a new spiritual goal, birthing a new aspect of the self of something you want to bring into fruition. A birthing ceremony can be really, really helpful to integrate the energetic assimilation of what you want to bring forth. And it's equally, like I said, distributed in terms of the energy. So it moves all the way through and connects you and combines you with that intention of what you want to birth. Okay. That second subset of this would be a triangle or a pyramid, a teepee type shape. And this has a central point of release, okay? If you've ever seen a TP, um, the center is open, right? There's sticks there, but there's an open for the smoke to get through. It's a release point. Um, in the pyramids, there usually was a capstone on the very top pinnacle point. This also had the ability to move or navigate or diffuse or change the energy release point how much energy was released, the shape of and the way that the energy was released. So if you are doing a ceremony where you are trying to release something, a fire ceremony, right? Where you're burning the names of maybe um, an ex relationship, burning the names of an ex boss, burning aspects of your old self from the college crazy days, whatever it may be for you that you want to let go of and release to the sky, release to the air to be transmuted into uh, light, then I would recommend a pyramid structure, okay? And having an apex point of release and giving yourself a sense of moving things upward and outward. That's a strong structural component that supports the intention of what you're doing in the ceremony. Okay. And the last one that I will say is the pillars are like a threshold that's created. Now these literally can be used as a threshold, like a stepping over point of a new life, of a new creation, similar to the birthing, but there isn't a momentum forward that's brought into place here. And this would be like two pillars on the side. A lot of marriage ceremonies are held in these type of threshold ceremonial spaces, right? Two pillars on the side and then a vertical and horizontal alignment that moves perpendicular to set up kind of like a T point. So 
two sides that are supported and a central um, like Stonehenge figure there. Now these are used when you want to create something new. Okay, when there's a union of two forces, when there's a union of two co-workers, a union of a new life mission for yourself, when you're stepping into a new creation. And there is an energy of combination here. Now, you can get as specific as you want. Sometimes um, these are seen, seen as the masculine and the feminine, like marriage ceremonies and the unification of such. It can also be just the masculine and feminine connection within yourself, the two strengths and pillars of our own um, polar existence in humanity that we have, as well as moving forward with connection to your vertical alignment to source and your horizontal alignment to this earth. This is why life purpose ceremonies, mission stepping into a particular spiritual mission or platform that you feel strongly about moving forward, these are particularly helpful with those types of ceremonies. Um, like also, Anytime there's a lion's gate, I like to do this pillar structure. And it can be created visually, even if you can't create it materially, right? It's not like you have to go out every time and go to Home Depot and build this fancy, <laughs> you know, portico to walk through. You can just visualize the structure and ask the non-physical realms to uphold this energetic structure and align it with your intention. Okay. So the second tip for how to create a ceremonial space is to consecrate it, to make it sacred, as you asked, all right? And one of the ways that I suggest that you do this is that when you create the shape, whatever shape it may be in for you, that you take a moment and make sure that the exterior is protected, all right? Now, I recommend putting a ring of salt all the way around the exterior of your ceremonial space if it's outside. And if you want particular strong protection, then I would also be inclusive of candles, fire, putting a circle of fire around your ceremony space. And I always ask spirit just in terms of numerology and sacred use of numbers, how many placements of candles are appropriate, what color is appropriate. A lot of times spirit will guide you and direct you to the specifics and formality of your ceremony. And if spirit is guiding those details, I would follow them, okay? Um, obviously in alignment with your higher guidance and light, but if, they're, if you're looking for a way to create protection and they go towards salt, which is a purifier, but it's also an amplifier of light, okay? It's crystal based, right? It's different than fire. Fire is alchemical and has chemical reaction. It, it, there is a reaction component to burn off, to transmute that is protective of that space as well. I have also used water, I will say. Water is is different because it needs to be programmed, right? The molecules, similar to crystals, should be programmed for how you wanna use the water, okay? Similar to like making a moat around your space or dripping water all the way around. Even just with a tincture bottle, sometimes I'll drip the water all the way around and spirit directs me to do that. But you always need to imbue that water. So hold the water or the glass or whatever it is that you're pouring out and set the intention energetically for what you want it to molecularly hold for you, whether it's protection, purification, clarity, um, whatever it is that you want that energy to uphold. It needs to be programmed, right? The molecules in water are absolutely fascinating, but otherwise it will just hold the energy of earth if you just put it directly into the earth, which is fine. There's a component there that is also very protective and calming and nurturing. But if you wanna use it for specifics, you need to imbue the water first, okay. After you have consecrated it physically, I would move into clearing that space. If it hasn't already been cleared, be sure you do that. It is a consecrated sacred space. So I typically hold a bundle of sage and I like white sage to burn. You can use Palo Santo or any of um, the herbs that are known to clear uh, chemically the space. And I hold it. And I walk the circle. I encourage you to walk three times clockwise and three times counterclockwise just to counterbalance the energy and to give that intentional focus to the space. 
as you're holding that sage, you are basically setting in a prayer-like form or an internal um, assertion of your intention of what you want it to do. So first, you walk with the intention that the space be cleared from any and all encumbrances, any heavy or dark energy, and that only things of light and in alignment with your purpose for that space may remain. And then you go back with the same intention. You can even state it out loud to get a sense of verbal power of authority aligned with your words. Okay, once you've done that, then you stop in the entry point. I always encourage people to have an entry point like a doorway, all right? Because this is also the use of a portal. You're essentially creating a portal, a, a pocket in space-time where it is set aside for one use or for one union or for one intentional um, time of ceremony, okay? So when you're doing this and you finish consecrating the space and clearing the space with the sage, um, I move to that entry door and then move to the center, put the sage out there with something, usually I have a copper pot or some sort of pot there that I can put things into. And then I invite in the light team. So in the center of the circle now, if it's a circle, I'm just using that as an example. I know I gave you a few different examples of that. Then I would move into internal psychic connection. So closing the eyes and inviting in out loud your ancestors, loved ones, your light team, your angels, ascended masters, guides, all of those or whoever it may be that you want to be present and help hold the space for you. I ask them typically to stand behind my circle of um, either fire or salt or water or whatever you've used as your perimeter holding point and ask them to hold hands or energetically connect and unify to hold the psychic space as sacred and consecrated for the ceremonial time. And I will see them and I'll start to feel them come in and feel them unifying and holding space for you to create your ceremony there. So my third tip for how to create ceremonial spaces is crystals, the grid work portion. So crystals are the basis, I think everyone knows this now, right? Crystals and quartz crystals, the basis of all of the computers that we have and a lot of um, a lot of watches, a lot of the stuff that we do. It's an information storing device, okay? And they work in placement when you place them or make a grid out of them, similar to the way that we use streets or similar to the way that if you ever have like pulled apart a computer and looked at a computer chip, there are literal pathways between all of the information circuits right? So where you place crystals creates a grid and circuitry of the energetics that you want flowing through your space, okay? And you can use them along the perimeter and within the perimeter or just notice that essentially they will draw grid work like lines between each of the crystal placements, all right? You also need to program those crystals for the energetic point of why they're involved in the ceremony, what type of ceremony it is, how you want them to channel that energy through. And you can, again, place them in or you can place them in alignment with your body or in a particular posture with what you're doing there. And know that they are the grid lines of energetic transference. So you place one here, you place one here. You have a line of interconnected circuit of the way that the energy is gonna flow through that sacred space, all right? And a lot of times, we will set these points with the crystals, quartz crystal, and then we will sit amidst the grid, in the center point of the grid, feeling all of the energy coming through and moving out, these circuits moving, using your body as that central crystal and crystalline form to move the information back and forth. And you'll start feeling and hearing and seeing, and this is where all of your uh, psychic connections go on overload. Because <laughs> you got that energy flowing really directly in a current to you or in a current to the fire if you're uh, having a fire ceremony or the baby if you're having a birth 
or whatever it is, or the union to both of you if you're creating something new, even creating something for yourself or setting a, a really deep intentional purpose for the rest of your life, new life ceremony. It's not always a birth of a baby. Like I said, sometimes it's a birth of something new in yourself. So those are my three main suggestions, all right? Align with a shape that is meaningful for what type of ceremony you're doing. Then consecrate and cleanse the space. And then use crystals in terms of grid work to move the energetics in the way that you want to use them for your ceremonial time, okay? Awesome, I hope that's a blessing to you guys. I will see you back here next week.